there's someone in you who's greater than you are. You don't have to wait on the priest. You don't have to wait on the preacher. You don't have to wait on the prayer father. But you can talk to him for yourself. God is transforming you to be just like him. You don't have to wait till you get to heaven to enjoy heaven. You can enjoy life right here on earth.
thank you. And that's a true testimony uh, that God does keep making ways for us. Uh, as a matter of fact, he's making a way right now. He's made a way for us to be here to witness this celebration. This time I want to ask members of the Finance Committee to come and uh, lead us as we prepare to worship and the giving um, of our offerings. Uh, if you are going to write a check, please make it out to uh, Mrs. or Minister Tasha Duvall rather than to figure out how to spell it. <laughs> uh, somebody else, um, thank Sharon Cole, um, uh, someone to, to, to inquire about Selena Bowers uh, and, and her, her name and the spelling of it. Uh, but uh, we said we'll call her mother because her mother named her, and I'm sure her mother knows how to spell a little name before she can get her out of this Oh, that's that's the L I N A. But uh, Tasha has proven to be um, a woman of faith and a woman of the word, a student of the word. And in the month of February of last year, she came forth to acknowledge the calling upon her life. And since that time, we have begun working with her to um, guide her in preparation for, for this day. Now, regardless of how much teaching or instruction she can get from me or in uh, an official classroom, um, the Holy Spirit is the only one Amen. who can feel her and Amen. actually guide her through the deliverance of any message anywhere. Uh, education is good and we, and we want to have it, but uh, the difference between the calling in the spirit and the calling in the natural is that uh, we are engaged in spiritual warfare, yeah. and our weapon of warfare, though not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down the strongholds, and to the casting down of imagination and the high things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God in order to defend oneself in spiritual warfare. Uh, he must have, as Paul says, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And, and as much as that she has proven herself to be, again, in the words of the Apostle Paul, now ready to preach the gospel, um, then we would be unjust and out of the will of God to not uh, give her this opportunity and extend it to her that she may uh, deliver the word of God as he has so given it to her. Let's receive our messenger, Minister Tasha Shabon. Today is coming from 
St. John 18:37 through the 19 chapter 19, 1 through 5. Do you pick up a Bible? Gospel of St. John, chapter 18, starting with verse 37, going to the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 5. Pilate therefore said unto him, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm reading from the King James Version. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. For this reason, for this reason, excuse me, for this, to this, to, I'm sorry, forgive me, I'm, my Bible is switching here. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I unto the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he said, when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and said unto him, I find in him no fault at all. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at Passover. Will you therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? <coughs> then, 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 then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Not Barabbas. Now, now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers planted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said hail king of the Jews and they smote him with his hands Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them behold I bring him forth to you that ye may know that I find no fault in him then Jesus came forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe and Pilate said unto them behold the man I want to put special emphasis on verse 5. Then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said unto them, Behold the man. You may take your seat. As I prayed about this message for this afternoon, I was reminded of the words of a famous televangelist who once said, if something's not God sent in my life, it's going to be God used. I realized that she was just saying, in the good times and the bad times, God still gets the glory. In an unfortunate work-related incident, I was rewarded with a set of colorful beads. I lost my office and instructional space in this incident. I was basically told, sorry, move out and rewarded with these set of bees at a meeting. As I listened to uh, Brother Patrick minister this morning, he said that he asked God for struggle. Well, in my case, I didn't ask for the struggle. <laughs> But, you know, as they say, I feel a shaking in the spirit. This came to shake me up. So I had to encourage myself with this incident. This is one of the many situations that will soon test my faith. According to James chapter 1, verse 3, the trying of your faith worketh patience. I realize that sometimes God allows you to go through difficult times, even at the result of wicked, the wicked actions of others. Yet whatever we have to endure, no matter how unfair and how, or how unjust, 
we can be sure that God will use it for our good. In Genesis chapter 5, excuse me, Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, the word states, You plotted evil against me, but God turned it into good. Amen. So, of course, I decided to do some research on the origin of these Mardi Gras beads. And so this is the information that I found. When Christianity, when Christianity arrived in Rome, religious leaders decided to incorporate rather than abolish some of these traditions from thousands of years ago. The traditional Mardi Gras bead color scheme was purple, green, and gold, each symbolizing a special meaning. The purple representing justice, the green symbolizing faith, and the gold exemplifying power. These celebrations came before Lent, the 40 days of penance between Ash Wednesday and Easter Sunday. Of course, these three festivals take place all over the world in many countries with more significance for the Roman Catholic populations. These festivals are sometimes called carnival, spelled C-A-R-N-E-V-A-L-E, -E, pronounced carnival. This was derived from the Middle Latin expression, which means farewell to the flesh, or farewell to bad things. A common custom of refraining from meat eating, in German, this custom in, German, in the German culture, these celebrations included a day of flogging or whipping in which the children were allowed to punish their parents. And I thought about that, I was like, I, I don't know if I want my child to ever, you know, whip me. Of course, I live with someone from the Caribbean, my husband, Desmond. So, I was somewhat aware of Three Kings Day, or as he called it, Tree Kings Day. <laughs> and then on this day, the kings arrived to greet and celebrate the baby Jesus. The three kings' cake had, tradi had traditional colors of purple, green, and gold. But of course, in recent years, these colorful beads have been associated with more rowdy behavior, as we see with our own St. Patrick's Festival. So I began to look closely at my, the color scheme of this particular set. And of course, I would never wear these beads, but I noticed the symbolic colors from a more spiritual perspective. So now what the devil meant for evil, God is working it for my good. So I looked at my set of beads and I thought, I have a green bead, which represents faith. I was immediately drawn to Hebrews chapter 11, 1 which states, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The word tells us without faith, it is impossible to please God. I got excited. Next, I had a gold bead. Thank God for the power. I serve a God that's powerful, omnipotent, omniscient, all-knowing, and omnipresent. He's everywhere. Next, I looked at the silver-colored beads. The blood. Excuse me. I looked at the silver-colored beads. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Amen. I was encouraging myself through this situation. Amen. Then I looked at the red colored bead, and I thought the blood that gives me strength from day to day will never lose its power. Amen. So what the devil meant for evil, God was working it for my good. Amen. Praise God, in times like these, greater faith is needed. Now, according to these traditional scheme of bees, I was given the faith, the power, but I was still looking for justice, the color purple. No justice was rewarded in my situation. But tonight, my title for my sermon is The Great Miscarriage of Justice. A miscarriage of justice is defined as a conviction and punishment of a person for a crime that he or she did not commit. As we focus on the sixth part in the series of a trial or these hearings for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we see Jesus face to face with Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. Jesus' trials were held between Roman and Jewish officials. Now, Rome was noted throughout the world for its justice. On every Roman official desk was a little figure, a little figure with two faces called Janus. One face looked forward, 
the other looked backwards. This figure reminded every judge in Rome to look at both sides of the question. Well, in my situation, nobody looked at my uh, situation. I was just handing these beads and said, move out, Mr. Ball. <laughs> Our morning cat day calendar was derived from the first month, January, reminding us to take, a, take back the old year, and we move forward to the new year. <coughs> at this time, Jesus was being charged with treason as he publicly proclaimed to be the Son of God. The Jews hoped to find support from this Roman government to support a death penalty charge. If you look closely in verse 38, Pontius Pilate, the governor, finds himself asking Jesus, what is truth? And it's amazing. Sometimes you can be facing the truth and still not see it. In the Gospel of John 14, excuse me, chapter 14, 6, Jesus explains that he is the truth, he is the way, and he is the light. In St. John chapter 18, verse 37, he states, To this end I was born, and for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. In other words, everyone that is a friend of the truth knows him and hears his voice. According to the scriptural text, the governor finds no fault with Jesus. But we know in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 22 to 23, Jesus was guilty of no sin, neither was the seat of gal ever found on his lips. When he, when he was reviled and insulted, he did not revile or offer insult in return. As we look into Jesus' behavior and example, he was meek, he was patient, he was calm, he was giving. It was evidence, proof of his innocence. Sometimes the person that's the loudest says the most, sometimes it's the guiltiest. Yet Pilate, this Roman government, takes Jesus and scourged him and severely whipped him. Now in this case, Pilate was a compromiser. He was willing to please all sides and was governed by worldly wisdom, then the rules of justice, and he was blinded to the spiritual truth. But we serve an awesome God. He's always in control of every situation and fulfilling his plans to the Jews and to the Gentiles. As prophesied in Isaiah 53 and 5, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we're healed. And I thank God for that scripture because I went through my own healing process. When I found myself gasping for air, riding in mercy ambulance, he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities, and the chastisement of his peace was upon him, and by his stripes I am healed and standing here today. And from that incident, I thank my family as well. I always talk to my mom, but I said, I still don't know how I got home. <laughs> but praise God. <laughs> I just woke up, I was in her house in her bed. So I thank God every day for life and strength. Yeah. In chapter 19, verse 5, the soldiers patted a crown of thorns on his head and put on him a purple robe. Purple symbolizing the color of royalty fit for a king. But then Jesus came forth, and Pilate said unto him, Behold the man. This is our key verse here. Now some say this was an insult to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as he was treated like an ordinary man, when he is the Son of Man, the S-O-N. But I say that one word, that one word, behold, makes the difference in this text. Behold means to see. It means to view. It means to look, to gaze upon his glory. If your eyes are fixed on Jesus, then you must be looking in the right place. So actually the Roman governor was actually presenting the anointed one, the only begotten, the bread of life, the bright morning star, the bridegroom, and the author of eternal salvation. As the word tells us in Hebrew 12, chapter 12 and 2, looking unto Jesus, the author, 
the perfecter of our faith, for who the joy was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The more I imagine our Lord and Savior in this purple robe and crown of thorns, I realize that the Almighty God was still in control of even this man made justice, and Pilate just thought he was in control. Yet they cried out, crucify him. In life, we all have to face choices. We have to make them. We can sell out by compromising our integrity, morality, character, or principles in exchange for power, prestige, financial gains of this world. Back in chapter 18 of St. John, the Gospel of St. John, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed into the hands of sinful and wicked men for 30 pieces of silver by Judas, one of his disciples. In this scenario, silver is the color of betrayal. Yeah. I got the silver bead. The word tells us that the love of money is the root of all evil. And some people eager for money, money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs, as stated in 1 Timothy 6 and 10. In life, some people will sell you out. It's more than they Jews. But I tell you, it's so much better to be a sold-out true disciple of Jesus Christ with loving your heart and a made-up mind to serve him. Today, we live with modern-day technology. For the love of money, position, and power, and an act of betrayal, your next act of betrayal might be a text message, email, or Google. As I observe in our text, verses 39 and 40, we live in a backwards world where sometimes the criminals go free, and the innocent are sometimes found guilty. Do you know Barabbas? Well, Lacey Rice and the Macedonia Baptist Church family, thank you so much for joining them in another telecast. They extend to you an invitation to join them in any of their services. Church school begins at 9.30 a.m. each Sunday. Morning worship begins at 11.30 a.m. each Sunday, each Wednesday night Bible study beginning at 8 p.m. Holy Communion services are each fourth Sunday at 11.30 a.m. To order a copy of today's service or any of the services, you may contact the church office by dialing 912-234-5349.